Thank you, Ron. Good morning, and welcome to First United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Greg Kroger, for all who are here in the building at 117 North Central Avenue, and for all those who are joining us by Facebook Live, we are gathered together for worship this morning. Uh, I am very grateful and blessed to be able to be back with you after a bout of COVID. I'll say more about that in just a, a few minutes, but it, uh, it's wonderful to be back. Um, and uh, as we gather together this morning, uh, we are having a few technical issues with our screen. So um, if you have your bulletin, uh, if you printed one out and brought it with you, you might want to refer to that at different parts in the service. But we're going to start out with our call to worship this morning. Uh, I invite you to stand as, as you are able. And let's share responsively. Let us bless God every chance we get. We bless the God of our salvation. Magnify the Lord. We lift up God's name in praise. Oh, taste and see that God is good. Those who make their home in God are filled with joy. Magnify the Lord. Lift God's name in praise. On this All Saints Sunday, we join together in song, and we're going to share in uh, the first three verses of For All the Saints. All the saints who from their labors rest, who thee by faith be for the world confess. Thy name, O Jesus, be forever blessed. Oh, alleluia, alleluia. Was their rock, their fortress, and their might. Thou, Lord, their captain, in the wealth of fight. Thou, in the darkness, drew their one to light. Alleluia, alleluia. May thy soul, dear faithful, true and bold, fight as a saint who nobly fought of old, and win with pride the victor's crown of gold. Alleluia! Alleluia! And join with me in prayer. Blessed are you, God of our salvation. As we turn to you in prayer, be with us and reveal to us your ways. From your revelation in Jesus, teach us how to live in ways that honor you. By humbling ourselves, by being content with what we have, rather than striving for more. By caring and cooperating, rather than competing in unhealthy ways. Teach us, giver of all goodness, to be strong in your strength for the sake of the gospel. Help us honor your prodigal grace by living as doers of peace in this world you love. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I want to speak to uh, the children of God this morning. Kind of includes all of us but especially for the kids either here uh, in the TCC or, or watching by Facebook. I uh, asked our uh, grandchildren in Bismarck to help me with the message today. Um, and I talked to them through their dad. I said, well, we're talking about prayer. And of course, there's different ways that we can pray. We can pray silently. And especially as we think about praying for other people, we can think about others and their needs in the, the silence of our, our thoughts. Or we might speak out loud 
a prayer, you know? Help grandma to get better because she's really sick right now, whatever, whatever the specific request is. Or we might write down a prayer and we can pray that silently, pray it out loud, or, or we can write that prayer down and maybe give it to the person um, about whom, for whom we are praying. And then there's another, well, at least one more way. I'm sure there's many more, but the next thing that came to mind is, you know, I know that as a child, I like to draw. And I see uh, our grandchildren, I remember, you know, their parents wanting to draw when they were young. And why not draw a prayer to draw a picture of what we want God uh, to do for somebody else. And so I, I asked our grandkids, I said, well, would you draw me a picture? Are we able to bring that up, Joanne? Okay. All right. This, is, this was drawn by Maisie. She's seven years old. And, you know, we're going to be talking about God's, God's power, God's love, and living with the fullness of God this morning. So thinking about God's power, this is, this is God speaking. God's love, God's power. I I'm, I'm didn't get a chance to ask Maisie, but I'm, I'm assuming that's her. <laughs> Self-portrait. <laughs> Hearing God speak from, from heaven above. That's her picture of a prayer. For, for Mitchell, uh, our oldest grandson, he drew a picture of Jesus. Now, I'm not quite sure how, why he got a frowny face. Uh, maybe... <laughs> I'm not sure what Mitchell was thinking, but more important, this was a picture in Mitchell's prayer of Jesus coming to earth. And notice the big heart in the middle of Jesus. Yeah. And that's a prayer for the love of Jesus to be in all of us, to be in each other. And then lastly, Milo, who's three years old. Oh, Mitchell, by the way, is five. Milo is three. And this takes a little bit of interpretation, and fortunately his dad explained it. Well, Milo was drawing a picture of the baby Jesus. <laughs> and Milo has a picture, a prayer that is well beyond his awareness of its significance, because in drawing the picture of the baby Jesus, you know, there he is kind of in the manger, you see him. <laughs> At the bottom, I guess those are lights or angels or something. It kind of looks like a manger scene that we read in Scripture that in Jesus, the fullness, the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And so as we see baby Jesus, we know that in him is the fullness of God. And then because Jesus shares his life with us, we have the opportunity to have the fullness of God in our lives. God has given us creative minds. God has put his spirit within us to be able to pray fully for one another. Pray in silence. Pray with words. Words spoken, words written out. And pray with pictures. God leads you to draw a picture. Go for it. Let's pray. Lord, thank you that... From the perspective of little children, even at that point in our lives, we can begin to, begin to understand your goodness, your love. Help us to express back to you and for the sake of one another that goodness, that love, that fullness of life that comes from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to share some of the ways in which we, as a church, have been in ministry this past week. And um, in terms of ministries that are going to be happening um, in the days to come, I want to offer a huge thank you to Penny Gallinat and those that provided, packed, and or distributed candy uh, for our drive-through trick-or-treat event yesterday. 
it was an outstanding success. Um, in fact, it was more of a success than we were fully prepared for. <laughs> As we ran out of uh, the bags, uh, 400 and some, I think we decided had been prepared. And uh, we were going to go from about 4 till 6, and by about 5.30 we had run out. But tremendous response. So thank you uh, for, the, for the quick and uh, most helpful response uh, from all of you in the congregation that allowed us to do this on such short notice. I want to thank all of you on behalf of myself and, and my wife, Joyce Ann, for your prayers, your texts, notes, cards, Food that was brought over these past few weeks as Joyce Ann and I dealt with COVID-19. I want to thank also Roger Eastland and all those who assisted in worship uh, to help keep things flowing, going right along. And uh, it's a great comfort to know that in times when you, when you can't do what you want to do, that there are plenty of folks here to be able to carry on and do exceedingly well. So... Thank you. We are doing well. We're not 100% back, but we're not contagious. We're not dealing uh, with any difficult residual symptoms, uh, just some annoying things. And they're probably not all that bad. If I need a nap in the afternoon, I mean, how bad is that? <laughs> some days I just kind of poop out. So, um, but a little snooze and I'm revived. And uh, the same is true for Joyce Ann. Uh, it is a reminder that there are many folks who are dealing with a much more serious bout of COVID-19. And some, uh, some, in fact, whom we're going to lift up today in prayer because COVID has claimed their lives. So, um, you know, we are dealing as a church with the ongoing impact, and it's going to be with us for quite some time. I know there are folks wishing it would go away. But we've got a ways to go. And our task force met uh, this past week, uh, the group that has been dealing with our safety procedures and precautions so that we can all stay safe uh, during the pandemic. And uh, basically, as I have shared in the messenger and in my video update this week, we're going to continue uh, through the end of, basically through the end of this calendar year with our uh, pattern of gathering here at 8.30 in the TCC sanctuary at 11 o'clock. We know that sooner than probably any of us are going to be ready for, Christmas Eve is going to be here. And it's kind of a, a difficult and troubling prospect. How do we plan for Christmas Eve with everything that is going on? Well, we're going to start by gathering information from all of you. And so sometime this next week, we will have a survey that will go out. And basically, we're asking if folks are wanting to, planning to come to a Christmas Eve service, if you'll be bringing <clears throat> other family members with you so that we can plan accordingly uh, based upon the number of services, the way we space them between TCC and Sanctuary. We don't want to schedule a whole bunch of services when the demand is not there, nor do we want to underplan and find out that no folks really want to be in their church on Christmas Eve. So uh, thank you in advance for your responses uh, to that survey. A couple of other uh, quick things. Uh, next Sunday, we're going to be honoring our veterans and active duty military personnel. Uh, very pleased to have received uh, quite a number of pictures of folks uh, who either have served uh, previously or are currently active duty. And then November 18th is our charge conference, and that is going to be by Zoom. Uh, our district superintendent is not able to meet with us in person, and so these meetings are taking, taking place primarily with the leadership team or administrative council within each church. But I want you to know that if you want to be a part of that meeting, the open invitation is there for you to do so. You just need to be in touch with us in the church office so that we can get you the information to join in the meeting uh, with the Zoom link information, either by phone or by, uh, by video conference. You'll need, you will need your own digital device, though, uh, to be able to join in, either a computer or our smartphone. 
again. That's November 18th at 5.15 p.m. Well, that's Mallory Meyer to come and uh, share something. Not quite sure what she's got in mind. I get a very general picture, but. <laughs> well, good morning. My name is Mallory Meyer. For those of you who don't know me, I am the um, chair elect of the leadership team, and I'm also the chair of the Staff and Parish Relations Committee. And October was um, Pastor Appreciation Month, and things got a little bit away from us. But um, typically, as a church, we will give our pastors um, some kind of gift to honor them for their service to us. And usually what we've done in the past has been like a gift card to go out to eat, which just did not seem prudent in our current situation. And so we reached out to um, Carl, uh, Pastor Greg's son, and asked for some hints as to what kind of gift that um, Pastor Greg and Joyce Hammond would maybe appreciate for their home. And he suggested to us a John Crane print. He said that you guys really like his artwork. And so uh, Joanne Hipple went out and found this beautiful um, painting of the Capitol at wintertime. So you can see the geese on the lake and uh, the Capitol building covered in snow. And so we wanted to give this to you guys to thank you for everything that you've done for us this year. Thank you, Mallory. Thank you. This is beautiful. We, uh, we didn't set out to become collectors of John Crane prints, but that's kind of how it's turned out. <laughs> and uh, this, is, this is really special. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, all right. I, I, I'll, I'll be shocked next, right? <laughs> Okay, we uh, have a special uh, All Saints presentation. I want to, I'm checking with Joanne here to see, do we think this is going to work this morning? We're going to get, oh, okay, all right. Okay, well, um, hopefully, uh, yeah, at least we can see in those on Facebook Live, hopefully we'll be able to see the pictures as well. So today is All Saints Sunday. And it is a reminder that God's people are the saints of all times, of all places, of all everything that we think about from the very beginning of, of the church through today and even in the mind of God looking into the future. The communion of saints is that connection that we have with all fellow believers of every time, of every place, of every culture. To call upon the name of Christ is to be a part of the communion of saints. And among the communion of saints are those who are now joined face to face with the Lord. Some of those saints are still living among us, but we honor them today because they're people that have influenced us in our own faith journey. And so we have a presentation to show you to celebrate among us the saints, some many who are with the Lord, others who are still among us. And we say, thanks be to God for the saints among us. I might you to look to the uh, images projected.
Well, we are having some technical difficulties today. And um, one way or another, we will share this uh, celebration of the saints among us. Um, if it's next week or in, in the following week, we'll find a way. Uh, because it's, it's important to do that. I do invite us, though, to uh, join together in a time of prayer. I'm going to lead us in our prayers and, and then um, invite you to join me in a few moments in sharing the Lord's Prayer. A gracious and loving God. Oh, we got, okay, all right. We're going to go ahead and do this. Let us pray. O gracious and loving God, as we enter into this time of prayer, our nation is at a pivotal point in its history. And we pray for the full and free exercise of the voice of all of our citizens. We pray, Lord, that in the course of the election process that things would go well, that those seeking to cast their votes would be able to get to the polls, and that the whole process would come under your care and your guidance. Lord, we pray for healing for our nation. We don't know the future of this election, but we know that you hold 
the future of our entire world, every nation, every community. We look to you individually and entrust to you our personal futures. And so, Lord, we exalt you as Lord, as our Savior, as our God, before whom there are no other gods. Oh God, we pray that there would be uh, breakthroughs in dealing with COVID-19, that those researching vaccines, those gathering information and assessing various therapeutic procedures would be given wisdom from on high to be able to lead us. And we pray, Lord, that you would help us, each one on a daily basis, make those decisions that we need to make for the sake of the love of our neighbor. And we pray this day, Lord, out of love for one another, for the family of Belleville Wood, for the family of George Griebel, the brother, brother-in-law of Jeff and Lisa Mamiga, having passed yesterday from COVID. We pray for Karen Wilcox, for Mike Bonhorst, for Sherry Barden and Rose Malsa, for Gaitha and Robert Tenike, for Nancy Sterling Newhauser and Ray Newhauser, for August Nyhart and Shelley Nielsen, for Tori Rattling Leaf, Les Trout, Melissa Flodmeyer, Ashley Boone and Tim Kirkpatrick, for Al Christie and Dean DeGoyer, Chad Strophus and Delora Bennett, for Anna Wharton, David Wilbur, Jane Howard and Barbara Smedley, for Ron Mackey and Penelope June Geigel, for Nicole Chesky and Brad Maskovich. And we focus our prayers on everyone quarantined from the COVID virus and all those dealing um, with active virus and infection right now. We pray all of these things in the powerful and precious name of Jesus as together we unite our voices to pray the prayer that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Our scripture reading this day is from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 17. This is why I kneel before the Father, every ethnic group in heaven or on earth is recognized by him. I ask that he will strengthen you in your inner selves from the riches of his glory through the Spirit. I ask that Christ will live in your hearts through faith as a result of having strong roots in love. I ask that you'll have the power to grasp love's width and length and height and depth together with all believers. I ask that you'll know the love of Christ that is beyond knowledge so that you will be filled entirely with the fullness of God. Glory to God, who was able to do far beyond all that we could ask or imagine by his power at work within us. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus for all generations forever and always. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We're going to join together in song. Invite you to stand as you're able. And we're going to, praise team is going to lead us in word of God speak.
Please be seated and join me in prayer. Gracious and loving God, as we reflect upon your word and seek inspiration, understanding, application for our lives, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts would be acceptable in your sight, for you, Lord, are our rock and our redeemer. So how many of us are ready for this election season to be over? <laughs> Raise two arms, right? I'm certainly ready because the next one's about to start, and I can't handle more than one of these at a time, right? <laughs> Seriously, though, we need, we need a shift in the things that dominate our conversations, that fire our emotions, and crowd out the will and energy to do that which makes for a healthy, diverse, and interdependent community. My friends, I want to remind us of who we are. We are first and foremost God's children. Joined together as a community of faith in this portion of the body of Christ, known as Peer First United Methodist Church. That's who we are. No other descriptor, no other allegiance, no party affiliation, no polit political persuasion has any greater claim on our identity than our identity in Jesus Christ and to our belonging to one another. We are joined together in covenant relationship. Covenant. Now that's not a word or a term that we, we frequently use. We, we might think of, of covenant in terms of certain property use requirements or, or restrictions, but for our understanding and purposes, covenant is the defining word for our relationship with one another. A covenant is more than a simple agreement. A covenant is more than a formal contract. A covenant is a binding of one to another so that in good times and in difficult times, in other words, no matter the circumstances, the existence of the covenant provides a reinforcing element for us to keep our mutual commitments to one another. It's the glue that solidifies us in relationship with each other. Now, the very opposite of covenant is consumerism. Consumerism seeks to answer the question, well, what's in it for me? 
And when the answer is not satisfactory to one's personal preferences or expectations, the, the response easily follows, well, then I'm going to make a different choice. Well, then if that's the way it's going to be, I'm out of here. Now, that's not inherently bad in all circumstances. I mean, there are times when, as consumers, we need to make choices, and whatever we, choice we make, that's perfectly fine. This is not a matter of a covenant. But when it comes to our relationship with one another, covenant is the defining word, not consumerism. The foundations of this covenant are in the fivefold promise we make to God and to one another. We covenant to offer our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, our witness. And over the next few weeks, we're going to look at each of these in detail. And today, our, our, our focus is on the promise to participate faithfully with God and with one another in the ministries of our church by our prayers. Our prayers. And to sharpen that focus around a powerful and specific example of prayer for ourselves, we're going to look at Paul's prayer for the church at Ephesus. It's a wonderful example for us to follow, especially in times such as these. Paul's prayer on, on, on behalf of the Ephesians gives us a good model for such intercession as he asks essentially three things for the folks at Ephesus. He asks for power, for love, and the fullness of God. Let's consider first power. And for us, it means we pray for power. We pray for power. Paul prays for the church to be strong. And immediately we think of physical strength or, or financial strength or mental strength. But this prayer is for strengthening, strengthening in your inner being with power through his spirit. In, in other words, this intercession asks that the Ephesian church be strong where it really counts. Deep within inner strength. As easily as we might tend to ask for the other kinds of strength for another person or for a congregation, this prayer bypasses those strengths for an inner power that steadies and strengthens every other aspect of one's life. In other words, pray for that inner power, that inner strengthening, and the rest is going to fall into line accordingly. It starts on the inside the inside out. This power, spiritual power, is the very best means of support. Unfortunately, substitutes for this best means of support, spiritual power abound. We live in a world full of people struggling to be, or at least to appear, strong in order not to be weak. We all engage in this to one degree or another at various times where we don't want folks to see what's really on the inside, and so we project that which might not really be true of us. But instead, we will find greater strength if we understand our weakness. For the message of the gospel is that when we are weak, it is when, in those times, we become strong. The gospel is counterintuitive. It is the strength of Christ who comes and ministers to our weakness and brings healing. As the beloved hymn goes, I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk. Let me walk. Let me walk close to thee. And what a privilege to pray for one another, for our ministries together, for God's spiritual power to grow and grow and grow deep within. What a privilege to pray for one another, to have that inner empowerment. The next thing we see is that we pray for love. We pray for love. The very next phrase of Paul's prayer asks that Christ would dwell in their hearts as they become rooted and grounded in love. And notice that love is not a free-form emotion that comes and goes, ebbs and flows. Neither is it a feeling that we conjure up to fit our own particular disposition or personality. Love is a groundedness, a rootedness, deriving from the occupancy of Christ within the very heart. In other words, there is an objectivity about this love, having to do with the standard of self-giving set by Christ. It is Christ who is to order the heart toward love by living there, 
such a love should grow deeper, stronger, and sturdier with time. I think of our grandson Mitchell's picture of, of Jesus with, you know, the big heart right there in the middle. Jesus is saying to us, I want to share that heart with you, that heart of love. Years ago, Robert Boyd Munger wrote a booklet entitled, My Heart Christ Home. The title speaks for itself in the course of the book at various rooms in the heart are opened up to the question of whether Christ is really welcome there. Are there any places that are off limits? Eh, no, you're meddling, Lord. No, just get out of there. <laughs> no, you can't go in there. I mean, it's quite one thing to visit with a friend over lemonade on the front porch and quite another to invite someone into our family room or take a look in the refrigerator or check out the medicine cabinet in the bedroom or the bathroom. May Christ dwell in your hearts, the prayer goes. Probably knowing full well how subversive and life-changing such an intercession could turn out to be. But Jesus in on the inside, things are going to change. Imagine with me the impact on each of us. If we are praying with and for one another with fervent intent that we are rooted and grounded in Christ's love, what could possibly be more important more transformational, that Christ's love would dwell fully within. Wow. There's no, there's no greater prayer, no greater blessing that we can offer to one another. And lastly, in Paul's example, we pray for fullness. We pray for fullness. Lastly, Paul prays for something rather peculiar. Put in other words, it's like he's praying for the Ephesian church to be slightly overwhelmed. Because he wants them to comprehend the incomprehensible. Breath, length, height, and depth, and love that surpasses knowledge. So that you may be filled with all of the fullness of God. It's not just a matter of saying, yeah, I'm, I'm full of the Spirit. I am full. It's a sense of awe and wonder. It's like, man, I am just overflowing with the fullness of God. I can't describe it. I can't explain it. It's beyond my understanding. Paul is saying we're to pray for one another, for that sense of the fullness of God to be our ongoing experience. When we are full, then other influences, other temptations, other pressures are less likely to penetrate and displace the fullness of God within. And then when we're full of God, other stuff is going to have a harder time getting in. You know, there are two ways of handling pressure. You know, when we've got those things from the outside that come at us. And you can think about those pressures in terms of how we explore the deepest depths of the ocean. One is illustrated by a bathosphere. Uh, these are these miniature submarines that are used to explore the ocean places so deep that the water pressure would crush a conventional submarine like an aluminum can. I mean, the pressures are, are beyond really our ability to comprehend uh, such levels. But we are able, through technology today, to build tiny submersibles that can withstand these crushing pressures. The, down, the downside is that because they have to use these thick, thick plates in the hull, they're very heavy. It, it makes them very hard to maneuver. And inside, they're really, really cramped. So when these craft descend to the ocean floor, they find that they're not alone. I mean, they go to these incredible depths, and then they find that there are sea creatures. There are fish that live in this environment. And you go, how in the world do they do that? Well, these fish cope with extreme pressure in an entirely different way. They don't build thick skins. They remain supple and free. To help with this, deep sea creatures have piezolites. They're small organic molecules which have only recently been discovered. These molecules are built into the structure of their bodies. And, and these piezolites stop the other molecules in the creature's bodies, such as membranes and proteins, from being crushed by the pressure. Though we're not exactly sure how this all works. We just know that that because of these other substances, it allows these creatures to compensate for the outside pressure 
through equal and opposite pressure inside themselves. Christians, likewise, don't have to be hard and thick-skinned as long as they appropriate God's power within. God's fullness within to equal the pressure without. I mean, if you feel like stuff is coming in, closing in, crowding in, it's a weight on your chest. It's like, Lord, fill me up because we got to displace this pressure. I need more of you, Lord, to offset that which is coming at me. My friends, let us pray. Let us pray unceasingly for one another. Let us pray with power for faithful Christian living. Let us pray with hearts of love. Let us pray for the sense of fullness in, of God in our lives. These are not things we should pray only for others. Let's, let's ask God to make each of these things living realities in our own lives. I want to close uh, the message today as we're going to do through the next few weeks. At one point or another, we're going to sing a song that really captures the theme of this whole series. The promises that bind us together. We're going to turn to number, uh, words will be projected. It's from the faith we sing. Number 22, 26. Bind us together. Bind us together, Lord. Let's sing. us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together in love. As we continue to share our gifts, the offering plates are near the entryways. Also, as we share our gifts by mail uh, through digital giving, encourage us to uh, cease not in our well-doing. And with that, offer, I offer my deep appreciation to the faithfulness of this congregation as you continue to offer your gifts to God in support of the ministries of Pier First United Methodist Church. Let us sing together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Alleluia, alleluia. God, the source of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ, whose power uplifts. Praise the Spirit, Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Oh, holy God, thank you for the great cloud of witnesses that surround us as we worship. Their diversity reminds us of your infinite grace to all your creatures. Thank you for the vision of a world at peace, paradise restored, where no one hungers, no one thirsts, and no one is wanting. You guide us to the source of living water. Invite us to drink deeply of your love. 
Your magnificent generosity evokes our deepest thanks. And so receive these offerings that we may join that great cloud of witnesses as we share our gifts with others. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Amen. My friends, we, on this first Sunday of the month, are going to share from the table of the Lord. We'll be using the the cups. Um, And for those of you watching at home, I invite you as well, if you have received one of these cups, to go ahead and make sure that it is opened so that you can be able to uh, remove the wafer and then go ahead and remove the lid for the cup. If you don't have one of these readily available, I encourage you just to use a bit of juice, a bread or a cracker. As we gather at table, the invitation is a wide open invitation for all. You don't have to be a member of the church. You don't have to be of a particular uh, denomination or age. This is an open table where all, all are welcome. And so we remember together that on the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this that you might remember me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is being poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink of this, do this that you might remember me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Pour out your spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread in the cup. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we might be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast together at his heavenly banquet. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. I invite us together. Let us take the bread and share with one another the body of Christ given for you. Together, let us share the blood of Christ given for you. Take and drink. Eternal God, we thank you for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go forth in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves a ministry to others. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able as we receive the benediction. We are renewed and filled with the sweetness of God. We are committed to one another in our intercessory prayers that we might receive power for faithful Christian living, hearts of love, and a sense of the fullness of God in our lives. Go forth to bless the world with joy in the spirit of God's redemptive love and sustaining peace. Amen. And we conclude with the final uh, three verses for all the saints. Communion and fellowship divine. We feebly struggle, they in glory shine. Let all are one, in thee for all are done. Alleluia, Alleluia. Oh, there breaks a yet 
for a glorious day. A saint's triumphant, rising bright array, the King of glory, he passes on his way. Oh, alleluia, alleluia. Earth's wide bounds from oceans farthest coast through gates of pearl streams in the countless foes singing to fire the sun and holy ghost oh hallelujah hallelujah